But one thing I would like to commend Germany for is giving you the op- or giving students the opportunity to work professionally on a wow. part time basis at work, right? Mm-hmm. So um in, in Germany students are allowed to work twenty hours. Um let's say for mm-hmm. instance you want to work in as, as a marketer where you're out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You have mm-hmm. to look for working student roles in marketing. So wow. what the, yeah, what this does is that it gives you like the first, you know, approach or the the gateway into a mm-hmm. corporate world. Yeah. Hi guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. I know you guys know what's happening on the channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Anne and on here, I do talk about life and study in Italy and I'm also a feed-based content creator. Today, this is the very first episode of um, Lenses, you know, where international students, people living from, you know, everywhere in the world, come on and share life and your experiences living abroad and to kind of like give you insight on what you should expect while moving to that country today i have with me the amazing Ada <laughs> from germany she's you know she's here to share with us life in germany and you know it's also to help you guys if you want to move there you can always just reach out to her to kind of like assist you as well. So let me just allow her to introduce us, herself. Hi guys, um, welcome to Ant's YouTube video. <laughs> uh, my name is Ada and um, I have a YouTube channel myself. Um, it's called Ada's Place, where I talk about life in Germany, coming to Germany, how to study, relocate, work here in Germany, and also share some content around uh, my life here in Germany, my experiences and things like that. So if this is the kind of content you're looking out for, head on to my channel. Um, Anne is going to leave it in the description box. Head on to my channel to subscribe. But before you do that, subscribe to her own channel here. <laughs> so that you can um, get as much information and as much knowledge as possible from her. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. So we are going to just right away get into the conversation. First of all, can you share a bit about yourself with us, Ada? Mm, um, a bit about myself. So um, I came to Germany in 2019. Um, I, I relocated from China to Germany as a student. I studied here. Um, my master's in international business and so far it went well i i finished in 2021 and then i've been working full time since then up until now so um yeah this is pretty much about me as a content <laughs> this particular um topic and what we're going to be talking about but yeah in, in general it just shows that like i have a little bit of experience migrating as a student and um also um in terms of my job um, and also working here in Germany as well. As well, okay, okay. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Which university, like, are you currently enrolled at, or which university did you study at? Okay, so I studied in um, Gezma Business School, but um, with Grenoble Ecole de Management, and I will explain. So the university itself is called Grenoble Ecole de Management. It's a French university, um, headquarters in, I think, in France. But they have, like, a campus in Berlin under Gizma Business School. Okay. Yeah, so my degree was from Grenoble, but then um, I also had, like, a, an attestation from Gizma because, you know, it's in Germany and stuff like that. So, yeah, that was where I did my... Um, Masters. Masters. Okay, okay, okay. So, how long have you been in Germany? Yeah, so um, now it should be up to four years ish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I came in. I came in in twenty nineteen, um, August twenty nineteen, um, and then my program started in September twenty nineteen. So I officially moved to Berlin in September twenty nineteen, okay. and now in twenty twenty three. So. <laughs> Roughly, roughly four years. Oh, yes, yeah, that's 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 a while. That's a long time. Mm-hmm. So now let's talk about you know life in Germany. Tell us like how easy was it coming to study in Germany, and what were some of the requirements? Um, it was. I mean, if I compare my experience to some of my colleagues that came in from Nigeria straight to Germany, I think for me it was fairly easy. It was. <laughs> 
a bit easier because I came in from China. And um, I mean, generally, coming in from Nigeria is a bit tougher at the time in comparison to even right now. I mean, right now is even worse because you have to first get the appointment and appointments are not you know, easy to come by these days. But um, at the time, um, appointments were fairly easy to come by. Just have all your documents ready. You refresh an appointment and you get it. And so for me, um, I came in uh, directly from China to this place, as I mentioned. And then all I just needed to do was to have all my documents ready. I went to the embassy. It took them about seven to eight weeks to have my visa ready. And then they get they sent it to me and I was able to come. Wow. Then, yeah, then for the document itself, um I used mostly the documents I used in applying to school. So I had those documents in addition to um, proof of funds, because that's one is required by the um the embassy. Mm -hmm. The proof of funds is really required by embassy, not by the schools. So I had uh, my block account and um, some confirmation as well from my school, like my school in China, stating okay. what I was doing there. Because mm -hmm. again, because I was applying from a different country, mm -hmm. I had to prove that I was resident in that country. And so I yeah. had some from my school with my um, uh, permits in China and everything. So mm -hmm. it was pretty straightforward actually. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Thank and you, I said, yeah, I also remember during my um, my visa interview, they asked me a couple of questions. They were just like very simple questions. So what are you coming for? Why do you want to study this course, this and that? Meanwhile, some of my colleagues that came from Nigeria, they, <laughs> they explained that <laughs> during their own time, they're asking them like strange political questions. <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't have that experience at all. For me, it was quite true. Wow, wow. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Yeah. Okay, so let's go to you know, what are some scholarships in Germany that you kind of like know of? But then even yeah. before that, mm -hmm. anyone coming into study in Germany, what do you think are some of the things they should prepare for? Mm, I mean, if you're coming to study in Germany, when it comes to things you can prepare for, first of all, mm -hmm. it's a different culture, most likely. Usually if you're coming in from um, Africa, you know, yeah. coming from um, Europe, you know, mm -hmm. it's a whole different atmosphere here in Europe when it comes to life, when it comes mm -hmm. to culture, when it comes to making friends, social life, you mm -hmm. know, and um, also how to manage your finances. <laughs> everything is everything is completely new. Um, and it would require some getting used to, some adjustments here and there. So um, generally, I just advise that you keep an open mind mm -hmm. and be ready to learn as much as you can because um, that's the only way. <laughs> that's the only yeah. way if you're open to learning and being a fool for the first you know couple of months trying to grab as much as you can um, for me when i came in i was also i was on a partial scholarship from my um university for my business school because i went to business school mm -hmm. I was a partial scholarship that kind of gave me some money left some money back so mm -hmm. that was it but generally um apart from the scholarship that most private universities really give you can also get um, some government-funded scholarship. For instance, you know, they have the Erasmus scholarship and you also have the DAAD scholarship. The only thing is you just have to check if you fit the criteria and you check what the criteria is, you know, in the first place. So in some cases you have where you have to, first of all, get the admission before you apply for the scholarship. And in some cases you have to, with the scholarship, apply for an admission. So you just need to know what fits what and um, organize your documents as well. And about the scholarships, they are not just tied to um, European citizens or maybe like it's something that Germans can only enjoy. International students um, can also participate in the scholarship as well. It doesn't matter where you're from, so long as you miss the criteria and they give you the scholarship, you can basically <laughs> enjoy it. So okay. I think it's a good thing. It's a good thing um, in Germany. They, they create this level playground where everyone mm -hmm. can um. enjoy you know yeah, yeah. yeah yeah that's that's actually good because here mm -hmm. in eq2 is the same it's available mm -hmm. to everyone so you know yeah as long as you meet the requirements you can kind of like um get access to it so that's actually really true and i love the fact that that's the same thing um happening in germany yeah, so yeah. if you're coming in and probably you might be asking yourself is germany the place for me to go study or move to 
I hope mm-hmm. as the conversation is rolling by, it's helping you kind of like decide which, um, like, you know, if Germany is actually yeah. the place for you to move to. Okay, so now let's um, go to what are some skills, okay? Mm-hmm. Today, it's not, it's not enough for you to just get an opportunity and just jump abroad or just move abroad like that. Um, mm-hmm. We are seeing more and more that you, you must come prepared to be able to grab opportunities. So what are some of the skills that you think people coming in can kind of like learn, even if as international students or people just wanting to normally move to Germany, what are some skills they can grab to kind of like make themselves, put them ahead, mm-hmm. you know, in getting job opportunities in Germany? Um, yeah, I think in, in one of the videos in my channel, I, I talked about skills that people mm-hmm. that want to migrate to mm-hmm. Europe or migrate to Germany should um, get. So if you've not watched that, head on to my channel and watch it. <laughs> Guys, go <laughs> but, watch it. <laughs> just. But uh, just to touch on that a little bit, there are a couple yeah. of, I mean, skills differ. It depends on mm-hmm. what you want them for. Exactly. The cases where you want to have um, skills for a side hustle, because mm-hmm. uh, for me, I'm a preacher of side hustle. Get mm-hmm. <laughs> because you cannot rely completely on your nine to five. Yeah. And um if you want to and it also helps you with your creativity and stuff like that. So if you want to get that kind of um skill, you know, there are different things you can do. You can learn yeah. how to make hair, how to make dresses, how to even like do digital content, you know, yeah. which is what you know we are doing right now. Yeah. But um on the other hand, when it comes to professional skills, um I think something that is very important that everyone coming here that hopes to work professionally should have mm-hmm. is um, Excel. It's very important. Mm-hmm. And not a lot of people have the experience firsthand in their home country before moving in. But if you're coming mm-hmm. here to work professionally, it's, it's a very important skill to have because um, a lot of d- data will be moving around. Mm-hmm. around. Yeah. And even if, yeah, even if you don't put in this data yourself, you need to be able to read the data and understand mm-hmm. the things that are going in there. So you should have that. And you depend on the kind of role you would have. You might not necessarily have um, like very professional, you know, very analytical skills, but at least just sure. know how it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then um, something else too is networking. You need know how to communicate mm-hmm. in a social gathering, mm-hmm. in a social center. Mm-hmm. Yes, this is also something that I'm personally learning as mm-hmm. well. So don't feel like, oh, okay, this is only things that people from um outside of germany should learn mm-hmm. even for some of us that are in here we are constantly learning how to do these things you know so yeah yeah you can you can learn how to network you can practice networking practice the kind of um we had to say small talk the kind of mm-hmm. things that that small talk you know how you can engage someone in a, com- in a um conversation how to be an active listener because okay. you don't just want to keep talking 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 <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> Yeah, and not give the other person room to talk as well. Mm-hmm. And even if they are talking to you too, you need to actively listen so that you're able to understand. Not just listen to oh, reply, but listen mm-hmm. to what they're trying to say because that's how you remember, you know, mm-hmm. what they come about. So, yeah, you need to learn that as well. And you also need to learn how to um, use what's it called, LinkedIn and Zing. Zing is the German form of LinkedIn. So, it's also a networking platform for professionals. Okay. They have to optimize your LinkedIn and your Zing account and um, just be visible to recruiters because sometimes you don't get jobs by actively applying, you get jobs by being seen and recruiters reaching out to you, yeah. stuff like that. So, yeah, so these are small things I would point out for people to learn. Yeah, okay, okay, thank oh, you so yeah, much. Something too, something too that just came to mind is team mm-hmm. work, team okay. work. Yeah, it's, it's actually very, it's actually very important because. Um, working here in Germany, you're going to have a lot of collaborations across teams, mm-hmm. and even within the team you're working in. So you need to learn how to have a bit of patience, how mm-hmm. to you know be a good team player. Doesn't yeah. necessarily mean you have to kiss ass or <laughs> or you have to um, be a people pleaser. Yeah. There's how to um, exert yourself, how to communicate clearly, mm-hmm. um, how to um, help or assist as much as possible and also how you can learn from each other it's actually fun but yeah it's something yeah. that you have an open mind on yeah 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 thank you so much thank you so much for sharing that okay so now let's move to how easy now we've we've spoken about the skills you need to kind of like get 
to be able to make you um you know to give you a higher opportunity of getting jobs in germany how easy it is to get student jobs in germany how easy um getting student jobs in germany well, one thing i'd like to commend germany for is giving you the op or giving students the opportunity to work professionally on a wow. part time basis at work right mm -hmm. so um in, in germany students are allowed to work 20 hours per week mm -hmm. <laughs> during um semester um mm -hmm. season so when it's during the semester session it's supposed to allow mm -hmm. them to work 20 hours a week and mm -hmm. um you can as a student you can get a professional job so let's say for mm -hmm. instance you want to work in as a marketing in marketing you want to work as a marketer when you're out yeah mm -hmm. you have mm -hmm. to look for working student roles in marketing so wow. what the, yeah what this does is that it gives you like the first you know approach or the the gateway into mm -hmm. a professional corporate world yeah and um, you also get the opportunity to learn a lot of things from those that are already um working yeah. in here yeah. you have the time to practice the little things that you learn from school try to see how all the theory that you've been gathering from school actually works in a practical that's, sense yeah <laughs> that's, that's yeah good. that's good and then yes it also helps you build um network it also helps you improve on your skills you know and so one thing that you know i've been because i also had the opportunity i worked as a working student in school mm -hmm. one thing that it really helped me do was that when i now graduated from school mm -hmm. it was a little easier for me to get you know a um what is it called a full-time job okay. in some cases some companies would want to retain you yeah and, you know it already takes away the hassle of looking for a, a new job yeah. right mm -hmm. Yeah, and in cases where you're not retained, some people within your network can recommend you to, you to know, whatever. other people. Okay, okay. But with that, um, do they pay well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, they 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 pay well. Um, if you work, um, and you earn minimum wage, um, I don't remember the exact amount it is now because um, it has I know it has increased because of the yeah. inflation. So I don't know what exactly the, how much it is currently. But um, if you make minimum wage, you don't pay taxes on that. But in most cases, most companies pay above minimum wage. Wow. So, yeah. That's yeah. actually good. Yeah. And it's fairly what is in the market. So you will not be shortchanged. In <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good. That's good. And, I, I mean, this is my own personal experience. And from what I've experienced, no, so okay. they got paid very well. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Because out here, usually, like during internships, you are mostly not going to get much you will not be able to do a lot with mm -hmm. that money so it's good that they actually really really um pay out there in germany so yes. guys i hope that is helping you to <laughs> kind of like decide they pay enough for mm -hmm. you to you know be able to survive on a general sense now Same. it doesn't mean if you if you're living if you're living in a mansion of course they'll not mm -hmm. pay you the rent for you <laughs> <laughs> but if you're living in a fairly regular student's apartment, the money is usually enough for wow. you to cover your daily expenses and have like a little bit to spare. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So guys, I hope that's helping you because out here in um in Italy, the I think most companies are just going to give you six hundred euros. And here our minimum wage is is on the floor. Like it's a whole situation out here. Some companies will not pay you well and all of that. But then it's good that out there in Germany, like you're going to get companies that will not actually shortchange you as, mm. you know, a student. Mm. Um, I think, with them. yeah, I think on an average, although I'm not 100% sure about this, but I think on an average, um, working students get paid either between 14 to 16 euros. Wow. Hour. Wow. Yeah, so that's Wow. Fair. Wow. Yeah, you will be struggling with maybe something eight eight euros, nine euros. You'll be struggling around that. I'm telling you guys. Yeah. I, okay, okay. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Now let's talk about racism in Germany. Mm -hmm. You know, when you you are just a student and going to your campus and all of that, the situation can be different as compared to when you move into the working world or maybe you're just you're going to school and you're working as well have you had an experience where someone kind of like treated you poorly just because of your skin color or like have you had that experience with your friends um i mean when it comes to racism 
personally i wouldn't say i've had like a direct experience where someone mm-hmm. treated me in a certain way simply because i was black or mm-hmm. so i can't um i can't really say however i also know that i don't go out mm-hmm. for experiences so that's probably why I haven't this. Maybe if someone treats me badly, I just feel like okay, maybe just because of something else. My first instinct doesn't go to yeah. Yeah, because of I'm black, right? And um, I also don't have an experience of someone directly calling me a, like a name that comes, mm-hmm. to, you know. So that's yeah. it doesn't you know occur to me. If if maybe someone treats me poorly, I just feel maybe it's kind of a different issue. <laughs> So yeah. that's how that's how I just navigate life because personally I feel like if you go about looking for reasons to uh or maybe reasons why someone will treat you in a bad way because of your race, you will definitely find it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. um I also understand that my goal here in Germany is not to fight racism. <laughs> my own it's just to make sure that um, I have um, a good, like I'm comfortable, I have a good livelihood, that kind of a thing, right? Yeah, so yeah. If anything is coming to distract me from that, I kind of just ignore it in most cases, right? And yeah. then also, I'm, I'm also, um, uh, what's the word? I'm also aware that my own experiences are not the same thing with other people's experiences. I'm sure some other people have had like maybe very direct you know, uh-huh. patients because of their race. And um, I mean, that is also very possible. I've heard different stories of people having very weird experiences. Yeah. And I'm not, saying, I'm not saying that this thing do, does not exist in Germany. I'm not saying yeah. that it doesn't happen. I'm only, yeah. saying, I'm only saying that personally, it hasn't really happened to me in that way, at least enough that I can remember. And uh-huh. then I always advise don't go about looking for it because you might definitely find it. Find right? it, yeah. So, okay. so yeah, and I also understand that yes, even though um, racism is a thing globally, uh-huh. when it uh-huh. comes to Nigeria as a con- uh, as a continent or even Nigeria as a country, because I'm from Nigeria myself, uh-huh. uh, we also have other prevalent issues that maybe racism. It might not be racism, but it's they're still in the same WhatsApp group. So, you know, we have tribalism, we have um, xenophobia, and this and that. So, there's always going to be hate somewhere. <laughs> Yeah. yeah yeah that's true that's true that's true thank you for sharing that with us because you know racism is it's a touchy topic but then it's yeah, actually yeah. most people are really concerned with it especially when they are considering moving abroad because you want to be sure like is this the place for me mm-hmm. um you know are people going to treat me differently just because of my color and all of that because there are situations where you kind of like qualify for a role but it's not going to be given to you because of your skin color and all of that yeah mm-hmm. so thank you so much for um for sharing that with us okay okay so um would you say germany is like a place for studying and you know working oh yeah of course i would 100% recommend <laughs> for anyone that is coming in. However, I'm also I also like to be very diplomatic, you know, exactly. like be a bit more rational and just say that okay, it depends on what you're looking for, right? Yeah, I have friends that have been in Germany here with me, but they relocated out of Germany because Germany did not work out for them. Okay. So generally, it depends on what you're looking out for. For me, so far, it has been working. It has worked, and I don't have a reason to complain. Um, and it also depends on the level you are in life. Right now, I'm a single lady, so I it's not really a problem. <laughs> I don't have to deal with the kitas or <laughs> or um, deal with the school system and stuff like that. However, it doesn't mean I don't think about it. And I'm also, you know, in my mind, weighing okay, if I have kids, how are they going to cope in the in the German system and stuff like that? But I also know that I'm not the only one that have, that you know is thinking about it. That people that already have children here. Mm-hmm. And they don't mind. So I think at the end of the day, it just depends on your personal preference. But for me, um, Germany Germany worked out for me. Germany has worked out for some of my friends. For some others, not. But at least I would say that it's a good environment for anyone that wants to come to school, like, you know, study and also work. And work. Okay, okay. Thank you so much for sharing that. Now let's talk a bit about expenses. 
-hmm. How much, like, you know, normally as an international student, how much do you have to spend on feeding, transportation, accommodation, and, you know, all of that? Mm -hmm. I mean, um, now things are a bit more expensive because of the inflation. <laughs> yeah. But um, again, I also think it depends on someone's or your cost of living, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you have, uh, like, for instance, currently rents are crazy to get a, a new apartment right now with, um, depending on the size, in fact, even with very small apartments of like, say, 32 square meters, I'm seeing things like 900 and something euros per month. It's crazy. Right. So I know that things are a bit out of shape <laughs> right now. So uh, what, I would, what I would say for people that are coming in, um, if you can get an apartment where you can share the rent, you can split the rent, that's a shared mm -hmm. apartment. Yeah. That would be great because then it reduces the cost of living yes. for you. Mm -hmm. it's, it's mm -hmm. And then when it comes to um, feeding, if you are the type that constantly buys food outside, of course, it's going to be much more expensive for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then if you if you cook more then yeah. it mean you can save more money however something too that most people don't pay too much attention to is that because they think they cook it mm -hmm. feels as though um they are not wasting money right but the truth of the matter is that if you buy ingredients or buy food stuff more than you need and mm -hmm. have it get spoiled and you mm -hmm. throw it away it's also painful because it's yeah not money. that's true so um, when you're doing your planning, you just have to plan <laughs> properly. And uh, yeah, just try to make sure that you don't spend much more than you're supposed to. You know? yeah, yeah, okay. okay. Mm. But generally, I think um, I think if you're able to cut down the cost on rent mm -hmm. and you're able to manage feeding properly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that thing can be worked around. I mean, if you're working, then you would your um, health insurance amount to be taken from your pay slip mm -hmm. but if you're a student you have to pay health insurance and depending mm -hmm. on the school who you're going to you might either have to pay for the private health insurance or the public health insurance yes, okay yeah public is usually more expensive like public health insurance as a student is really more expensive in my own experience i was in a private school so i went with a private health insurance and it was quite cheaper for me okay so, yeah and health insurance is is something that you must have in germany so that's one but um, if we take that one aside, like the health insurance thing aside, and you're able to beat down your rent to low, 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 low like yeah. low as possible, mm -hmm. for feeding, you can, you can find your way through. I know that sometimes you might want to spend um, money in a restaurant, you might want to hang out with friends, stuff like that. You can manage it a little bit. Then when it comes to maybe shopping, buying clothes and stuff like that, they are, they are, those are things that you can control. You might not want to spend every month on shopping, but you yeah. need to yeah, manage and buy maybe once in a while. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you for um, sharing that with us because that's actually really, really helpful. Um, you know, my last but one question before we kind of like end this session, yeah. I would like to ask, is it easy getting like you know a job after graduation in you know germany germany um in germany after graduation you're given 18 months to get a job in your field mm -hmm. um my advice is usually before you even graduate from school get a working student job because then it gives you the experience that you need to get something even easier and yeah. if you're not, but i know that sometimes so some people are not, are not lucky enough to get the working student job but um on an average 18 months is really a good time to get a job in your in your field 18 months mm -hmm. is really it does not mean that i've not seen people that were not able to get a job and i know that sometimes you can try as much as possible do everything you can do but you're, you might not be lucky enough to get one yeah um yeah uh, the reason I'm, I'm highlighting that part is that some people just take it as a personal defeat you know mm -hmm. i don't think so i know that right now getting jobs is a bit difficult yeah the job market right now it's a bit difficult so just give yourself grace generally all right so but um on 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 an average 
it's actually good. Like that 18 months is good enough for you to get a job. You can use you can get like a working student a what a job seeking visa. Mm-hmm. You know, get you know the job and yeah. Yeah, I think that's what I'll say to that. I wouldn't I, I wouldn't call it easy. I'll easy, just okay. It, I'll just call it like a fair, a fair enough time to get oh, okay. It. Okay, okay. Yeah. And if you use if you use the different tools, you know, for job seeking. It usually works out good. So as I said, optimize your LinkedIn so that at least you can be seen. Have the right CV, you know, mm-hmm. um, use various sites, use network networking um, as well. So not just with the um, LinkedIn, you can also attend different programs or you know, in your field. Say for instance, there are different communities of blacks in tech, you know, you can attend mm-hmm. programs um network with them sometimes somebody might be hiring someone in the team and just because you had a coffee with them or maybe yeah, had yeah. Like that, you could be um interviewed you know and then it goes on from there but most importantly at the end of the day you just have to hold on to god because he's just the one that makes things easier easier yeah. that's true that's true that's true everyone in their faith some people it will work for them some others it might not so just try your best and then if that's the um, the place for you, you're going to get the opportunity to yeah. kind of like remain. So I, I guess that is the only way for like people or students to remain in Germany. Mm, yeah. After um, school. Yeah. After school, you have to, you have to get a job. So this is either you get a job as, mm-hmm. uh, as, as an employee or mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. like a freelancer. But to go to the freelancer route is a bit more expensive. expensive. Because you do have a company, this and that. Mm-hmm. Most people just prefer to find like a nine to five and stuff. So okay, okay, okay. Thank you so much for sharing that. So finally, like what would be your advice to any students looking to come and study in Gen- Germany or anyone looking to move to Germany? What would mm-hmm. be your advice to them? My advice is again keep an open mind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Because you're coming to a new environment, be, be open to learning, be open to um, experiencing more. And um, something else too is that um, Germany, <laughs> Germany is an interesting place, but sometimes too, you can get really lonely, you can get really boring, you can feel homesick a lot. So if you can keep the same, like if you can keep connection, keep ties, with your friends and your family back home, it will actually help you while you're getting integrated into the German soil, into the German space. Mm-hmm. So I, I know that sometimes people want to travel, they just cut all ties, you know. Um, <laughs> all things have passed away. <laughs> but that's not necessarily the best way to go because sometimes you need those um, people, you need, you know, those connections to help you um, find your footing in this new place so mm-hmm. yeah so that's just what i'll say just keep an open mind and still hold on to your past connections really. okay 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 thank you so if, much if sure. if the past connections are helpful don't hold on to a toxic <laughs> or a toxic or a toxic friendship simply because i said no oh, no please that's Let's true <laughs> that's true thank you so much for sharing that and thank you so much for coming on so yeah, guys thank you too for having me it was fun Oh, thank you. So if you are listening and then you, you are looking to, you know, come and study in Europe or you're looking to move here and you're not sure particularly where you want to, you know, um, study, where you want to move to, you don't have information about the place and what to expect, I think you should also reach out to Ada so that she will give you more insight. This video is not enough for you to just make a decision whether mm-hmm. Germany is the place for you. This is kind of like to help you um, take a further step. So you can reach out to her. She has so much on her channel. Go on her channel and subscribe as well. Then reach out to her so that she help you with all the things you need to know to decide whether Germany is actually the place for you to move to for studies or to kind of like permanently move there. So Ada, can you leave your details so that they can follow you on socials and then on your YouTube as well? Oh yeah, so um, on IG, my my handle is um, at Adas Place underscore um, Adas. So it's A D A Z like Z 
and then P-L-A-C-E, then underscore on IG. Um, on TikTok, the same thing, Adas Place underscore. And then on YouTube, it's Adas Place. So Adas Place <laughs> on YouTube. So you can reach out to me on any of these channels. And yeah, I try as much as possible to respond to my messages and to my comments. And uh, yeah, yeah, I try, I try. Sometimes it <laughs> gets really you know it's a lot and sometimes i might not see it on time but i try if if you're not able to if you have like an urgent question you, you're not able to reach out to me or i'm not able to respond to you as soon as possible via dms or email sorry or um comments you can send me an email because okay. once yeah once i get an email the notification pops up so i just keep yeah there we go. Oh, okay 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 so guys i'm going to leave your details like I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave her details on the screen and also in the video description. So you go directly from there to her channel or to her socials to kind of like connect with her. Thank you so much for coming thank you. on. Thank you. This thank you guys for listening. So that is it for the very first episode of Lenses. You're going to catch you in the next episode. Bye. Bye. -bye.